going to be a cold, clear night here in the Northern Hemisphere on the second official day of fall, September 23rd, 2018. Tonight I'm going to be doing something I haven't done in a long time on this YouTube channel, and that's using my DSLR camera for some deep sky astrophotography. The target for tonight is the Heart Nebula, and I'm going to be shooting it in Hydrogen Alpha. I'll be using this telescope. It's an apochromatic refractor from William Optics, the Zenith Star 73. I've had a few nights to familiarize myself with the Z73, the dedicated field flattener uh, using my DSLR camera, and uh, no surprise, uh, it's an incredible telescope. It's an f5.9 doublet Apo refractor. Uh, everything William Optics touches seems to turn to gold. I couldn't resist. Ask anyone that owns a William Optics telescope and they'll tell you exactly what you can expect. And it's just an amazing experience from start to finish in terms of the build quality and the attention to detail and the imaging performance. For those of you that follow this channel, you may have noticed that the Ioptron CEM60 is gone. This telescope mount was generously loaned to me from Steve at Ontario Telescope and Accessories and has since gone back. So now I am back to my Skywatcher HEQ5 SynScan Pro, which I bought in 2014 used for 700 Canadian dollars. And guess what? It still works absolutely perfect. I'm gonna do this with the CM60. So this refractor is 430 millimeter focal length, which means it's super wide. It's even wider than my old uh, ED80 from Explore Scientific. Super wide field of view, pinpoint sharp stars, uh, with a full frame camera, you'll have no problem. It's got the uh, imaging circle that's built for full frame cameras. Of course, the T3i is a crop sensor, APS-C size sensor. So I won't be able to take advantage of this. I'm actually filming on my full frame camera right now, but that's okay because I've got a number of clip filters that I can use with the T3i that I really wanted to use uh, with the Z73, including the astronomic 12 nanometer half filter, HA, that I'll be using tonight on the Heart Nebula. The reason the 12 nanometer astronomic HA filter is so powerful from the city is because it isolates a very specific band pass of light emitted by hydrogen alpha deep sky objects such as uh, emission nebulae uh, like the heart nebula that I'll be shooting tonight. From my latitude here in Canada at this time of year, the heart nebula will be rising in the east just over the roof of my house by about 9.30 tonight. Uh, one of the benefits of having a portable, lightweight, deep sky astrophotography rig like this one is that you can kind of move it around wherever you need it to be in the yard to get uh, a certain object in a, in a particular area of the sky. So I'm just going to do a quick polar alignment routine. I use an app on my phone to show me the correct position for Polaris uh, from, from my location for the night. And uh, then it's just a matter of making the adjustment to the mount and being polar aligned. I can connect the DSLR and control it from my laptop computer using specialized software. Um, all you need is uh, this USB adapter cable. Um, one end goes into the DSLR, the other end into your laptop. I'm just doing a quick three-star alignment with the uh, HEQ5 equatorial mount, uh, which is really easy with the DSLR camera, especially one with a flip-out screen like on the T3i. I can use the live view. And uh, look, I don't, you probably can't see it, but I can actually see the uh, alignment star in real time, even with an H-alpha filter in place. Uh, Altair is my uh, second alignment star, so one more to go and then we'll be totally aligned. The final alignment star I'm using is Vega, which is a really bright one, uh, which means that I'll also be able to um, do my focus with the star as well. There it is in the live view screen. So. We are pretty well dead center. It's what it's good to go. I'm going to set that as uh, aligned on the mount. Alignment successful, and now I'll just put the um, focusing Batnoff mask uh, from William Optics on the telescope to focus. 
All right, I'm star aligned, I'm focused. Even with the 12 nanometer HA filter in there, it's very dim, but uh, with a short exposure, I'm able to use the star spikes batten off mask and get a sharp focus on my uh, star. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys kind of what's going on behind the scenes here. These are the light frames I captured with the DSLR through the Z73. This is the IC1318, the Butterfly Nebula in HA. Uh, you can see they are quite noisy. It was, uh, the sensor was around 25 degrees. So that's a 300 second exposure at ISO 1600. So pushing the DSLR a little hard for, uh, for a, you know, a cool night. But uh, so there you can see the, the butterfly nebula, and then here is the heart nebula, uh, also in HA, the same settings, ISO 1600 for 300 second subs. So I'm just previewing these files in bridge. Uh, you can see the dithering between each frames, they're just moving around slightly. You can see the noise kind of dance around. Uh, but the focus looks great, and uh, more importantly, look at that field of view through the uh, Zenith, Zenith Star 73. So I'll take these images into Deep Sky Stacker, which I've got open here. So I'll open my light frames. And uh, so for example, with these uh, Butterfly Nebula ones here, you can see where I ran into the trees. Uh, I'll grab my light frames. And because I photographed it over two nights, I'll sort the uh, light frames from each set into different groups uh, with um, the darks. And I also captured bias files and flats using a astrophotography tool. Uh, if you don't know how to take flats, I have a video about that. So pretty straightforward using the white t-shirt method. So after it's stacked and registered in Deep Sky Stacker, uh, this is what the stacked image looks like in Photoshop. Now the key thing to remember here is that uh, we captured a very narrow wavelength of light, a very narrow band, and uh, it's in the red uh, channel is where you'll find the good data. So if you look at this, it looks rather noisy, uh, but if we separate it by channel, look at the red channel, uh, it looks much better uh, because that's where all the signal is. So green channel here, not much there, noisy. Blue channel, almost nothing there, very noisy. And then the RGB, of course, is, is combining those noisy channels in there. But So the red looks great. So to process this, it would just be a matter of pulling this channel out and processing this image separately uh, as its own grayscale image from the red channel. And then that could be blended into uh, existing color data for an, an HA RGB composite, which I have a video about, makes some very powerful images. Or it could just be left alone as a, as a narrow band image grayscale, which they look beautiful. Or I could shoot uh, using an S2 filter and an O3 filter to create a full narrowband project uh, of this nebula and that would create some really amazing results. For now I think I'll just process this on HA and enjoy the grayscale data. So I hope that was useful for you guys uh, that are looking to capture narrowband with your DSLR and anyone looking to see what they can expect uh, as far as the field of view with a crop sensor camera and the Zenith Star 73 APO. With a focal length of 430 millimeters at f5.9, the Zenith Star 73 fits the profile of the ultimate wide field ABO for deep sky astrophotography. I've talked repeatedly about how much I love compact ABO refractors, and I truly believe they are the best way to get started in deep sky astrophotography and one of the funnest ways to enjoy the hobby. It felt great to use a DSLR camera for some astrophotography again. I began my journey in this hobby with uh, a camera and telescope setup just like this one. If you're looking to get started and you're a beginner, you really can't go wrong with a wide field refractor and a DSLR camera. I've got a lot of exciting things coming up later this month, so uh, if you want to follow along, please subscribe to the newsletter and be sure to check astrobackyard.com for even more information about the Zenith Star 73 and uh, all of my example images with the full details. Thanks so much for watching. Clear skies.